Welcome back to basics. This is a short informative video where I'm going to show you all things furniture, what I look for when I purchase a piece, what you should look for when you want to paint a piece and the things that are going to take your piece to the next level. In this Back to Basics series, we are going to cover what you need to look for when you are purchasing furniture to paint. We're going to talk about details, wood, and things that you should know before you purchase an item from a thrift store. Let's start with this piece right beside me. This is a thrift store find. I actually got this at the Goodwill, at my local Goodwill here in Richmond, Virginia. When I am looking for furniture to paint, I'm going to go into the store and assess a piece. Now, what do you do to assess a piece? Well, first things first, you wanna kinda of look it over at a glance. You wanna open up all the drawers and make sure they open easily. If it needs a lot of repair, you need to factor that into the cost of the item. This dresser is in perfect condition, zero repair needed, and it was only $35. Okay. So why did I choose this dresser instead of something else at the thrift store that day? Because it is solid wood. When you open the drawers and look inside, the thickness of this wood tells me that it's very high quality. You can look for a maker's label, usually in the top drawer, stamped onto the sides or the base of the piece. This one didn't have any, but see this? Do you know what this is? Dovetail drawers. Whenever you're looking at a piece of wood furniture, that's one of the first things you can look at to tell if your piece is going to be high quality. High quality items, well-made items, have dovetailed joints. These are what you should look for, kind of like your first go-to in assessing a piece. Okay, so I'm at the store, I pulled the drawer out, I can see these beautiful dovetails. I'm gonna look inside. I wanna take the drawer out entirely and look inside the piece. You see inside of this piece, there's wood tracks. All of the tracks are intact, which means the drawers open easily, close easily, and they're all there, which is perfect. I don't have to replace anything. These wood guides, along with the back of the dresser drawers, are gonna tell you that this is a high quality wood piece. I'm gonna hold it up so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is a track right here. So when you put your drawer in, this slides on the interior piece. If these wood tracks get a little sticky, which sometimes they do from a lot of wear and tear, you can use beeswax or Big Mama's Butter to lubricate this area so that your drawers open easily. I love Big Mama's Butter because it smells delicious. You can use Big Mama's Butter on the entire interior of the piece to help your drawers glide easily and smell 100% better. Another thing I noticed about this piece in general is that it has these gorgeous keys. These little keyholes are actually original to the piece. They're brass on the outside and they have a fitting on the interior where this would actually lock at one point. I do not have a key for this piece. It's probably long gone. You can always go on to Etsy or some sort of website where you might be able to find a skeleton key and see if you could get these locks to actually work. This dresser is in phenomenal condition. I was super surprised at how clean the interior is and how all of these interior lock boxes are intact. So if you wanted to take the time to find a skeleton key, you could, and then use it in the selling points for when you're flipping a dresser. Having the original key is amazing, but it very rarely happens. Another feature that this dresser seems to have that a lot of others don't have is that it has the all original hardware. These are brass and in wonderful condition. Depending on your area and what sells well and what doesn't, you could always paint these or use the original hardware on a piece. Nine times out of 10, I put the original hardware back on. I personally love brass, but sometimes these bat wing pulls can be a hard sell. So I want you to take a look at the amount of drawers, how many handles it has, do they need replacing? And if they do need replacing, you need to factor the cost of your hardware into the purchase price. Because if this dresser only cost me $35, it might cost me more in hardware to replace every single drawer pull. Let's talk about the back of a piece. This is another great way for you to assess your item and decide whether or not it's high quality or solid wood. If you turn your dresser around and look at the back, sometimes old dressers or any dresser might have actual cardboard rather than wood on the back. Stay away from those pieces. You don't want those pieces. They're probably not high quality, probably not well-made. You can tell that this is a well-made dresser 
all the screws are intact and it's a wood back. It's really solid. The next thing you're going to look at is this top piece of wood. Whether or not this is solid wood or veneer, how do you tell? If you look at this piece of wood from the back, this would be the actual unfinished edge of a dresser. If this was particle board, you would see wood veneer, particle board, wood veneer. Wood veneer is a layer of wood that sits on top of a different kind of wood, basically. It's kind of like the cheap way of making something look high end. So by turning this around and looking at the back, you can see that this is solid wood. This entire dresser is so heavy, but the quality is very high end. Now you know why I chose this piece to paint. High quality, solid wood, zero repairs needed. The only thing that I might do to change this piece is take the hardware, fill in some holes and add some new updated hardware to make it look a little bit more modern. I love these keyholes. The possibilities are endless. You could strip, you could stain, you could paint. Anything is open when you have a solid wood piece like this. Solid wood, very good condition, totally high end. Stay tuned, I'm gonna paint it soon and then you can see what I do. Let's go on a little thrifting adventure. This is my local Goodwill. Let's go over a couple pieces that are not good choices. Number one, this one is particle board. Hard to paint unless you use slick stick. This little table isn't bad. It is solid wood and yes, it has dovetails, but it's missing some hardware and it's also very low to the ground. Low lying tables seem to be a harder sell, along with the fact that there is only one. Let's have a look at this little buffet. It has some water damage at the back that is very hard to repair, especially since this is veneer. How can I tell? Well, let's flip it around and look at the back. This is a reproduction piece. I can tell by the style of the drawer and the cheap looking finish. It's also very shiny. This project might require slick stick. Let's look at the back. You can see the particle board behind the piece. Particle board often holds water damages. Now we're gonna shop my shed. This little piece was a freebie on the side of the road. If it wasn't free, I wouldn't have taken it. I am going to have to strip all of this peeling paint. I do like this piece. It's tall, fairly solid wood. All the drawers are on track. There's no damages. This is an easy flip. Now parts of this are particle board, but majority of it is solid. I picked up this cute little nightstand for approximately $15 at a local thrift store. Yes, it's newer, but it's actually got great on-track doors and it opens really easily. You can tell by the back that it is cheaply made, but once you paint it and spiff it up, it's gonna look fabulous. This piece is vintage. I picked it up for I think around $25. I really like it. Keep an eye out for strange, weird, and wild pieces. They always sell really well and are always a fun makeover. And don't pass over the small pieces that need minor work. After removing the trim, look at how beautiful this piece turned out. Happy furniture shopping. I hope you enjoyed this Back to Basics video.